The history of ancient Kemet has garnered a significant amount of attention for generations. The monomania surrounding this civilization is hard to ignore. Because it's viewed as one of the greatest civilizations in human history, many have been interested in the genetic origins of the people, and in part, we've found some answers. Today, I wanted to speak about one of the most groundbreaking discoveries in the study of ancient Kemet a whole genome sequence of a man dating back over 4,500 years ago in Old Kingdom Kemet. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. My team and I have been doing our best to include animation and motion graphics in our videos. It takes a lot of effort and resources to do animation, and so with the support of our patrons, we can continue working with Playwatch, the studio producing these animated videos. This channel cannot continue producing this kind of animated content without your continued Patreon support. Additionally, if you're interested in your own animated content and would like to work with Playwatch, their link along with Patreons is in the description box below. Before I begin, Per request by you guys, I'll be referring to Egyptian civilization as Ancient Kemet, its indigenous name. I'll still be using the title Egypt occasionally relating to the modern country and what we find in the literature, so please keep that in mind. A recent study published in Nature marks a historic milestone. For the first time, scientists were able to recover nearly a complete genome from a man in Ancient Kemet who lived during the period when the pyramids were being built the Old Kingdom. The man's remains were found buried in a sealed pottery vessel in modern-day northern Egypt, and thanks to that unique burial, his DNA was preserved quite well. The researchers discovered that this man's ancestry was a mixture of about 80% North African Neolithic ancestry and about 20% genetic influence from the Eastern Fertile Crescent, essentially ancient Mesopotamia. People from outside the continent migrated and exchanged with North African people. This doesn't really come as a surprise for those who've been studying ancient Kemet for quite some time. The northern parts of Kemet was part of a network of trade, migration, and exchange spanning thousands of miles. Now according to their analysis, this man was determined to have had a dark skin tone, dark brown eyes, and wavy to curly hair. Now, as exciting as this discovery is, it actually highlights an even bigger gap in our understanding of ancient Kemet, because nearly all of the genetic data we have comes from modern-day northern or central Egypt, a region historically more exposed to foreign contact. And this matters quite a bit, because the DNA of ancient peoples from northern Kemet cannot axiomatically represent all of Kemet in antiquity. The ancestry of these African people was not uniform, and this is an important fact to delineate. So why does this matter? One of the principal reasons for sampling the DNA of individuals from ancient Kemet is to understand the mind behind one of the most impressive civilizations in human history. And to get to that answer, we need the data from further south. Many scholars have asserted that the roots of Kemet's civilization came from what's known in the literature as Upper Egypt and Northern Sudan. Several Egyptologists have affirmed this fact. For reference, Upper Egypt is Southern Egypt today. Egyptologists like Toby Wilkinson, for example, throughout his work has highlighted the fact that Pharaonic civilization originated in Upper Egypt. Here are some quotes by other scholars highlighting this fact. At the end of the 4th millennium BC, the Nakata culture developed in Upper Egypt which as the most prominent representative of the pre-dynastic age in North Africa directly laid the foundation of the Egyptian state. The roots of this civilization can be traced back to the reign of King Narmer. Narmer was the ruler of Upper Egypt, a region that was historically distinct from Lower Egypt. Narmer is believed to have conquered Lower Egypt and unified the two regions under his rule establishing the first dynasty of ancient Egypt. The foundations of the Pharaonic civilization were laid during the Nakata era, 4000 through 3200 BC. Nakata is an archaeological site associated with this culture and it was located in Upper Egypt, 
less than 20 miles north of Luxor. Several scholars have pointed toward Upper Egypt or Southern Egypt primarily as the mind behind Kemet civilization. These statements aren't just speculation, they're grounded in archaeology. The very core of Kemet civilization unassailably began in the south, including parts of northern Sudan. It was in the south where the first kings of Kemet arose, where the earliest hieroglyphs were carved, and where divine kingship took shape. Scholar Christopher Eret further delineates some critical aspects of pharaonic civilization that originated in northern Sudan or Lower Nubia. One key feature of classical Egyptian political culture often assumed to have begun in Egypt can be strongly linked to the southern influences of this period. We refer here to Sudanic sacral chiefship, which entailed in its earliest versions one especially salient custom, the sending of servants into the afterlife along with the deceased chief. The roots of later Egyptian divine kingship lay in this Sudanic innovation. This gap of genetic data from southern Egypt is well known and unfortunate. Just imagine the insights we could gain about these individuals at the root of Kemet civilization. Sampling genomes from the south or upper Egypt is not just an academic exercise, it's absolutely essential. While it is amazing to finally see an old kingdom genome, we should be clear, northern Kemet had influences from the Middle East. The Delta region in the north is literally the only land that connects Africa and the Middle East, and thus, as mentioned previously, it should come as no surprise that ancient peoples outside of Africa utilized it, contributing to northern Kemet's genetic history. The reverse is also to be expected. DNA from Upper Egypt may retain more continuity with the earlier indigenous profile. It is important to note that even Upper Egypt maintained contacts with communities to the north and east, which contributed to shared technologies and ideas. So it'll be important to see the sampling and compare that with the north. Regardless, one has to appreciate this accomplishment, but we should all keep in mind that a more salient analysis, one that truly highlights the mind behind Kemet's culture and civilization, would focus on what the literature calls Upper Egypt. Or the south. It would reveal the genetic profile of the people who were at the center of Kemet's rise, the first kings, the early artisans, and the priesthoods that shaped this African culture. Imagine the possibilities if scientists could retrieve high coverage genomes from Upper Egypt. Those results would be very exciting and absolutely historic. So let's celebrate this breakthrough, but also recognize what it reveals that the story of ancient Kemet is still incomplete and the most important chapters may still be waiting buried in the sands of the south. Well I'm all out guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, support the home team on patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.